Welcome back to Wudao Music and another Shao tutorial. In today's episode, I will be sharing with you some tips, some tricks, and some tools on ways to improve your embouchure. So let's get started. Now, while there are many ways to improve upon the embouchure for your Shao practice, it's very important that we always return to those fundamental details. Practice is number one priority. Every time we pick up the Shao, you need to make sure that you have correct posture, that you're breathing smoothly, that you create a good seal, and you maintain a good angle and position of the Shao itself. All of this is a skill that is going to develop over time. Okay, This sensitivity requires practice. My biggest piece of advice in the early stages is to go slowly and make small purposeful adjustments. Okay, A lot of times when we make a mistake, we tend to power through it, overcompensate, and disrupt our entire practice. Okay, You have to think of playing the shao as if driving a car on the highway. You know, We have to make these small adjustments as we go, otherwise we risk crashing the car. The same with the shao, everything is all these subtleties. The way we breathe, the angle of the flute, the angle of our body, all of this greatly impacts the sound. And so you don't want to make too big an adjustment and crash the song, right? So don't be afraid to go slow, make small adjustments, and you will develop that skill, that sensitivity, those fine motor details over time. However, you may find that you still have certain restrictions or limitations, certain barriers to overcome. So in today's episode, I actually want to put the shout to the side and give you a couple tricks on how to improve. The first method will help you develop power and accuracy. We do this by cutting out a square inch piece of tissue paper. Then placing it against the wall, start from a close position and blow a fine stream of air against it. The pressure will hold it against the wall and you can slowly back up as long as you can. Any change in air pressure will cause the paper to fall. This will help you develop power and accuracy and sustain for long periods of time. The second method will increase the sensitivity of the armature. Now we know that in shout practice we use the same muscles that we use to frown to create a good armature. Okay, so by tightening and relaxing those muscles, we can change the quality of the airstream. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to take your thumb, tuck it underneath, and then place the side of the hand on the chin where you would place the shout. Now what we're going to do is by changing just the embouchure, just those muscles loosening and tightening, we're going to start by blowing a airstream on the close side of the back of the hand and slowly move it to the distal side. And we're going to do that just by tightening and loosening these muscles. So we start tight and blow straight down. And by relaxing those muscles and slowly moving forward, the airstream is felt on the opposite side of the back of the hand. Now this is the sensitivity that we're going to use, the angle we're going to alter in order to change octave, in order to change registers on the shell. So it's a very important subtle detail to be able to know without resorting to dipping the head and changing this angle. We're only working with the embouchure itself. Very important detail for shell practice. My third tip is to get a tuner. Now I personally have downloaded an app on my phone called Sound Corset easy to use and absolutely free. There are links in the description as well. With this, you get a tuner, so it's a very good visual cue to know that you're on pitch. I know I'm a visual learner. It does help to have that as a tool, but it also has many other features. It has a recorded practice time. There's a, there's a metronome built into it so you can keep on rhythm, which is also really important in the early stages of playing songs and basic drills. You want to stay on beat. You want to stay in pitch. So have a tuner on hand ready to go. In addition to that, I would also practice regularly with a drone. Now, I have another app called TE Tuner, which is Tonal Energy Tuner, another link in the description. And with that one, it's a little bit more complicated to use, but it has a drone built-in feature, which basically means you can pick a specific pitch or a chord, you can even pick multiple pitches, you can hit sustain, and you can maintain that sound so that way you can harmonize with it. You can match the tone of your plane to that specific pitch. 
okay now this is really great for individual sounds just to pick up on you can also use a drone as you play music with so there's certain tracks and things like that that you can use that as kind of your bass note to coordinate from okay a drone is good in addition to a tuner because while a tuner is just visual right this is going to be training your ear which is really what you want to develop especially when you start playing songs to maintain that middle ground so a drone is also a very good practice tool highly recommend number five is less of a tip and more of a reinforcement go back to the basics <laughs> no matter what as long as you play always go back and check those fundamentals go over your basic drills do your scales do your long notes all the way to fail check your breath work check your posture these are the things that are going to allow you to actually improve your music as you learn a song, you improve on the basics, which will improve your musical piece, not the other way around. So always, always, always back to basics. For number six, while there are pieces of equipment out there to help your amateur, I would not rely on them. Only use them as an absolute last resort. I actually recently purchased a plastic attachment to have a mouthpiece on any shell. I know that lots of flutes have versions of this. Um, I know Shakuhachi does, I know other flutes do. Um, I personally do not recommend this. You don't get a very good sound out of it. It's a good tool to understand how the airstream works to create sound, but a lot of the playing of a bamboo instrument like this allows you to have a range of angles to create different dynamics and different sounds. A mouthpiece like this negates all of that and you don't get a really good sound. It's hard to adjust, doesn't pack a punch, and overall it's just not the true shallow sound. So I recommend play naturally. My final piece of advice is to find the music in everything that you do. Of course, if you've got five minutes, if you've got an hour, pick up your shell and practice. The great thing about this instrument, it's easy to travel with, move around with at any moment you can pick it up and play. So daily, daily practice, most important. But also know that there's so many other things that can improve your practice that don't necessarily have to be playing songs, right? Meditation, exercise, core engagement, playing different flutes, variety is the spice of life. Even things like blowing up balloons for a birthday party or blowing on your noodles before you eat. Find ways to play those pauses. And that way, you'll be more prepared for when it does come to practice time. So with that, get out there and start practicing. Keep playing. And we'll catch you next week.